Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to January 2022 favorites. I, I'm still getting used to saying the year 2022 out loud. In my mind, it still feels like it's a year far off into the future, but no, it's 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 now. I do have a couple of things that have disappointed me. I'm going to talk about them towards the end of the video. Let's start things off on a good note. Not going to blab too much about these because I literally just posted a winter skincare routine video. So I talk about my all the products that I use including these more at length in that video if you want to check it out but I still have to give them a shout out because my winter skincare routine wouldn't be my winter skincare routine if these were not in my life. This is now my second or third winter with these products. I have repurchased them numerous times and I just love them. I just go back to them when I don't have them in my routine. I miss them and especially for winter time, they're just incredible. And it's the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore Moisturizer. This is my favorite winter moisturizer. My skin just really, really loves it. I love the texture of it. it it's nourishing, but not greasy or heavy at all. I don't like the feeling of anything too oily or heavy on my skin, but I still need some moisture and hydration, especially this time of year. The next up, the Indie Labs In Circadian Night Mask. This is just such a beautiful night mask, especially for those of us with more combination oily skin. It almost feels velvety on the skin. It's very, very moisturizing, but not sticky or cloying. And I just love using it. I think the price point is really great. It's $24.99 at Ulta in the States and $24.99 at Shoppers in Canada. And it does go on sale. It's really great. I love it. And it's one of my must haves every single winter. In terms of makeup, for complexion product, I don't really have anything to share in terms of foundation because I'm still just using the three foundations that are in my project pan, trying to get through those. So I've just been rotating them. But I do want to give a shout out to my go-to under eye combination. This is not a new combination. Sometimes I like to switch things up and lately I've just gone back to this and I'm just reminded of why I love it, especially in the winter time. The Sicily Corrector, this is my go-to under eye correcting product to cancel out any darkness, any greenish, purplish, dark circles that I have. And this is my favorite. It's one of my holy grail products. I haven't even been entertaining the idea of trying a new corrector since I've discovered this. I've been really loyal to it. For the past three years, you get a ton of product. In terms of comparison, like I know it's really, really expensive. It's a luxury product. It's by Sicily. But you actually get 10 times more product if you were comparing this to the something like the Bobbi Brown corrector. So keep that in mind, you know, sometimes with these products, it's, it's worth checking the weight, especially when it's a type of product that you would use regularly. I use this daily. So I've never really strayed from this. I use this daily, whether I'm having like a full glam moment or not. If I'm having a minimal makeup day, I just use this and under my eyes and I'm good to go. But if I want to add some extra concealing on top, I love the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer on top. It's such a beautiful combination. It's been my go-to. I do set it with powder. I still love and use my Pat McGrath powder and I'm really, really happy with the way that it wears under my eyes all day. So that this has been something worthy of a shout out. Then in terms of color cosmetics, I do have two lip combinations to share with you, starting with the lip combination I'm wearing today. And it's all Lisa Eldridge, Lisa Eldridge Affair Lip Liner with Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief Lipstick. Just love this lipstick. It's like one of my favorite nude lipsticks for me. It's such a perfect My Lips But Better color for me. Such a beautiful balance of, of pink and peach and brown. I love it so much. And the Affair Liner works with it really, really well. The Affair Liner is gives me a little bit more of like a rusty warmth. And the formula of these lip liners is so, so good. I find it really, really long wearing. The pigment really sticks to the lips. So I've really been loving this combination. If I want something a little bit more pink, um, I've been loving Makeup Forever 3C Lip Liner with Hermes rose tan and if you want to see these in action i do lip and cheek combinations on my instagram i do them on reels and um, i did i did a combination with with these so i'm going to link it below if you want to check it out if you haven't seen it if you want to see what these look like on the lips but it's just again a really beautiful my lips for better combination this combination is leaning a little bit more pink whereas this um the Kitten Mischief that I'm wearing today is leaning a little bit more peachy. In terms of eyeshadow, still loving the Chantecaille Sylvie. This is one of the best single eyeshadows that I have in my collection. I 
adore this color. It's perfect. It's everything I want in like a one and done brown shadow. I am wearing it today, but I'm not wearing it alone. I feel like I don't shut up about this. Ever since I bought it, I've just been so enamored with it and I'm still using it. I'm still reaching for it almost every single day. Today I'm wearing it all over the eyes with um, just like a dark, a dark brown in the outer corner. And then for just a hint of like a little sheen, just at the center of the lid and in the inner corner. I'm using this Jones Road Just a Sec eyeshadow in the color Golden Peach. And I've really been enjoying this. Um, it's a really nice, it's like a cream, it's a cream to powder type of shadow texture. It's, it's not the most unique color in the world. It's just like a really pretty gleaming peachy champagne shade. And I love it. I received this in PR from the brand, uh, around December and I really, really enjoy it. It's been a really nice, a little bit more subtle alternative to the Victoria Beckham chiffon that I was wearing a lot in December. Chiffon has a bit more of a, a bit more glitter. The glitter in chiffon is a bit more obvious, but they are very, very similar. They're not sisters, but they're definitely cousins. They achieve the same thing. So this is Jones Road Golden Peach. It's um, the glitter in it is a little bit smaller, a little bit more refined. And then this is Chiffon by Victoria Beckham, which is a bit more impactful. So this is like a nice daytime gleam. So I haven't really strayed too much from the routine that I had in December, but just took things down a notch um, by shifting from Victoria Beckham Chiffon to the Jones Road Golden Peach. I thought this was really pretty. Um, in terms of formula, it's, it's nothing groundbreaking. I mean, if you have a similar color, you can absolutely dupe it. You can dupe this entire look, like you don't need to go out and buy these exact products, but um, it's just what I have in this color family and I'm really, really enjoying the combination and I'm enjoying just having a one and done shadow, but then just adding a little, little hint of a sheen just where the light hits the eye for a bit more dim dimension. And I really love this Hakuhodo brush. I don't have the number of it because the number is not on the brush, but I'm going to find out what it is and write it on the screen. This brush is amazing. It's like a flat eyeshadow brush, but it's really, really small. And this is what I've been using to dip in to the Jones Road Golden Peach color and just dotting it just on the center of the, the lids. And then in the inner corner, it's the perfect detailer brush. And I know I promised an updated go-to makeup brush video and I'm, I'm going to film that hopefully, hopefully in the next month. This is definitely one of my favorite eyeshadow brushes, especially when it comes to adding those little shimmery details. I've also really been loving the Ilia Mascara. This is the Limitless Lash Mascara. I think they have two. They have a volumizing one and then they have this one. This is a lengthening mascara. So if you're into length and separation, this is really, really good. It has a plastic wand. The wand is really weird. Like half of it is like a comb and the other half is just alternating bristles. It's a plastic wand. I know these wands are, they're not everybody's favorite. It took a while. There was definitely a learning curve with it, but now I really like it and I really appreciate it. It really gets in there and gives me a nice lift. It wears nicely all day for me. Um, if I really want long wearing and like extra cur curl hold, I still use my Peri Para Mascara Fixer. This is such an amazing primer. If you're somebody that struggles with mascara smudging or uh, struggles with mascaras holding a curl, this is really good. You will need a separate eye makeup remover to remove it when you, when you use this because this gives stuff that extra longevity. But these two make an amazing long wearing combination if I want that long, lifted curl all day long. But on an everyday basis, when I'm just working from home, I can just get by with this by itself. It still does a decent job holding my curl. These have been the fragrances that I have been wearing the most for the month of January. I am very predictable. I kind of follow seasonal patterns. And at the beginning of the year in January, when it's really, really cold out, I always gravitate towards woodsy, slightly, like I love sandalwood. I just gravitate towards sandalwood, woodsy, fresh, cool, and airy types of, of fragrances. And Diptyque Tam Dao has been on very heavy rotation. This smells so good. If you're into sandalwood and you haven't smelled Diptyque Tam Dao, highly recommend checking it out. 
it wears a really really well on the skin as well it's super long wearing and it smells so good a really great unisex fragrance absolutely love it so especially you know if you're a fan of Le Labo Santal 33 or Maison Maison Louis Marie Bois de Balancourt number four that's another one that's in, in the same family the Nemat sandalwood oil if you like any of those you will like to cheek tam dao it's so so good and then i've also been very very enamored with the uh, ds and durga coriander this was my latest fragrance purchase and this is so so good i want to just bathe in this if you like le labo gayak 10 you will love this they're definitely in the same family but i find this a lot more long wearing than that it's less sweet than gayak 10 but it's still in the same family. So again, I think with either of these, if you like Le Labo, Sanchal 33, Gayak 10, you will like these two. They're they're definitely in that same that same vibe and I love that I love that vibe. It's definitely the type of fragrance that is my absolute favorite and I could just smell delicious sandalwood fragrances and woodsy fresh things all day long. <laughs> Incredible fragrances to check out. The next item in the fragrance category is like home fragrance adjacent and it's this uh, scented wax tablet from Santa Maria Novella. This is in the rose scent. They have a few different ones but my personal favorite is the rose scent and this in my pajama drawer makes all my pajamas smell absolutely incredible. And the scent actually lasts. It like really permeates the fabric and it smells good for months in that drawer and it's just so good. This is a really beautiful, clean and soapy, fresh rose scent. Absolutely love it. But if you're not into rose, they do have other options. I just can't get enough of this and it's such, such a nice treat to have this in my pajama drawer. You know, obviously you can use this elsewhere in your closet, you can use it with your knitwear, you can use it with your lingerie. I just choose to have it in my pajama drawers because it just brings me a lot of joy to get out a fresh pair of pajamas and they just smell so good and I'm just really happy. So it's all about the little things in life, right? So love these and I thought I would give them a shout out because I feel like I might have mentioned them in a vlog a while ago, but I haven't mentioned them in a while and they still bring me so, so much joy. They're so beautiful. And then finally, I have some body care products. This is a hand soap that I'm just really, really digging. It smells so good and it's really nice and gentle. It gives a nice creamy lather and it's not too drying. I can wash my hands numerous times throughout the day and my hands smell really good for a long time the scent definitely lingers on to the skin and it's still gentle at the same time and it's this Olay hand wash and this is in the orange blossom scent they have a couple of other scents but i haven't tried the other ones i only i you know i love orange blossom so when i see orange blossom scented anything i kind of hop on it and i love it it's a really nice fruity floral scent and it's a really great hand wash. In terms of texture, it reminds me of like the Dove body wash. You know, it's more of like that lotion-y feeling, but it's really, really good. It leaves the hands feeling nice and clean um, and not too dry. So I've been really loving this. You can find it at Target. Uh, that's, that's where I bought it from. I uh, don't think it's available in Canada, so I'm sorry to my Canadian friends. But if you're in the States, pick this up at Target and let me know if you like it. There's, there's also a Jasmine one. Um, that I'm sure smells really good. I might try the jasmine next, but the orange blossom gets two thumbs up from me. This bath combination is top tier. I like to take a bath like every Sunday night and I just take my time and almost have like a little at-home spa day. You know, I exfoliate, I read a book, I light a candle. These two together make for the most glorious bath experience. These are the Knot Pot uh, CBD it's a CBD muscle soak and it's the peppermint version. They also have a lavender version, which I haven't tried because I really love this peppermint one. It's a really beautiful bath salt. It's very strong, it's very zingy. Excellent for sore muscles. If you're feeling sore after a heavy workout, or if you've just had a rough week and need some TLC, I love these bath salts. I have to thank my friend Becca, Becca's son. She's the one that introduced me to this brand. And 
it's been like over a year now and I haven't looked back. I actually subscribe to them, so they, they come in the mail <laughs> every month. I do like to add a little bit of bubbles to it, so I've been using my Necessaire Body Wash in Eucalyptus just in the bath, just a little bit. It gives a really nice lather. It's like a nice, soft, gentle bubbling. My skin feels so nice and soft and clean when I leave the bath. Um, it's not going to give you like lush bubble bar experience. Um, it's more of like an, an understated, like grown up, <laughs> grown up bath moment, but smells so good. My skin feels really nice and I just feel so relaxed after I leave the bath. Necessaire Eucalyptus is my favorite. I just buy the big, I buy the big aluminum refill bottles and um, I have a pretty large bathtub so it looks really nice on the edge of my bathtub. The sandalwood one is really nice too. That, that's the one my husband likes, but I'm partial to the eucalyptus. This whole thing is recyclable too. It's aluminum, which I really appreciate. And I just love the scent of it. It's um, it's a really earthy scent and it's there's nothing synthetic in it. And I was looking at the ingredients the other day and I was like, oh, that's, that's why it's such an earthy scent. It's just literally eucalyptus leaf oil, a little bit of lavender oil, some fur, orange peel oil and ginger root and patchouli. So I can smell all those notes in there and Oh, it's so good. So this with this equals Sunday night bath heaven for me. I've just been loving it. And that's it for for products. I do have a, a random chocolate favorite to share with you. The Honey Mama's chocolate truffle bars are the best like healthy chocolate I've ever tried. And I've tried, I feel like every brand that they have at Whole Foods. This is amazing. They have these in the fridge in the fridge slash freezer section because these do have to be refrigerated so don't look for them in the regular chocolate aisle they're delicious um i tried the regular like just like the plain chocolate flavor and it was good but the ginger cardamom one you know i love cardamom so much and i love ginger so this was a no-brainer it's so good the texture is really good it's almost like a it's almost like a condensed brownie type of texture but it's so good the ingredients are really good it's you know pinned as like a healthier candy alternative. It is very expensive. It's like $5.99 for this. Um, and it's split into three and you know, each, each bar, it's supposed to be three bars, right? And each bar is supposed to be one serving. So I guess it's, it's $2 per bar, which is not cheap, but it's such a delicious treat. I, I absolutely love, love this. So I will definitely be repurchasing. And if you're, if you like these little healthy treats, and if you're at uh, if you're at Whole Foods, check them out. They do have them at other stores, not just at Whole Foods. Um, if you just go on their website, you can find a little store locator and see where you can pick them up. But that's just where I personally got them from, and I love them. So thought I would give these a shout out. Let's go into the disappointments. I have three disappointing products. The first being the discoloration repair serum from Polish Choice. I talked about this in my skincare video. I'm sad I couldn't get this to work because so many people whose reviews I absolutely love and trust, they have really good results with it. So I still would say it's worth a shot, but it just didn't work for me. It just broke me out. Every time I tried to use it, I had a breakout and I've tried for the last five months to use it. I've tried to, you know, do my best um, and, and, you know, eliminate things from my routine and this was the only new thing I had introduced and every single time I was using it, boom, I would get a little breakout the next day. So this unfortunately just did not agree with my skin. I will see if my husband has any luck with it. His skin is a lot more resilient than mine. He's not really acne prone. So I'm wondering if this could help. Um, help fade any of his sun damage. So I'll be uh, I'll be passing this along to him and um, Hopefully this will work for him, but unfortunately this did not work for me And then the other product I have here is this uh, clay mask This is the Chantikai detox clay mask with rosemary and honey and this just really disappointed me I was expecting this to just be such a delightful clay mask. I love clay masks and I love Chantikai I think um, you know, I love so many of their makeup products and I really love their uh, their hydrating skincare products. I heard a lot of really great things about their Jasmine and Lily mask. I haven't personally tried that, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, and it's a pain to wash off. It's really, really deeply, deeply pigmented. So it kind of gets everywhere when I'm washing it off. And I wouldn't mind that if the result was worth it. But honestly, other than just making my skin feel soft, 
It doesn't do anything in terms of helping clear out any pores. It doesn't really do anything in terms of balancing my oil production. You know, one of the ways that I like to use a clay mask is if I wake up in the morning and, and I'm having like an oily T-zone moment, I like to put on a clay mask just in my T-zone, leave it on for 10 minutes, wash it off, and then I find that that helps balance out my skin throughout the day. That's how I was using the Caudalie clay, clay mask or the Youth to the People clay mask. Those clay masks are great and I would recommend those over this. This kind of disappointed me, it didn't really do anything. And then the last disappointing product is this powder from NARS. And I'm actually really curious if any of you use this and if you like this, let me know how you use it. What brush do you apply with it? What's, what's the technique that you use? Because I'm just not really loving it. And it's the NARS Loose Powder. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Loose Powder. This is just in the crystal shade, the, the lightest shade. They have since, the packaging is a nightmare. They have since fixed the packaging and it now comes in a nice like mesh um, like with a little mesh container with a, a, a separate lid inside because I have the old packaging and it's just as you can see it just goes everywhere it's really really messy but yeah they've updated the packaging and they've also released more shades in this now they kind of relaunched it along with their new foundation and I actually really like the pressed version of this but this loose one is just not doing it for me every time I, I apply it I just feel like it's not flattering on my skin and just makes me look really, really dry. It doesn't hold a candle to the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder. They are not the same. <laughs> just curious, you know, I'm not ruling this out yet. I would like to know if you have this and if you love this, let me know how you use it. How, what products do you wear it with? How do you get the best results with it? Because I would like to make this work but right now it's not working for me. And that's that's about it for me. I don't think I have anything else. Um, if I have anything else and I forget about it, I'm probably going to talk about it on Instagram or something, but that's it for me. I hope that you had a really great day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for watching this video. Let me know if you have any favorites to share, if there's any recommendations that you have. I'm always all ears in the comment section below. I'm so grateful to have you here. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye.